All right, we're walking along the Alpine pedal path, enjoying this gorgeous view. I wanted to give you some information about Big Bear Valley in general. As the cities at the base of San Bernardino Mountains began to grow, developers sought a water source for the citrus groves that would be their likelihood, livelihood. <laughs> Natural rainfall was less than ideal for growers, and the Big Bear Valley held the nearest and best option to augment the limited supply. A dam was built in 1884 at the west end of the valley to create a reservoir to capture spring water and yearly snowmelt. It's going to be a big year this year for that. It was a single arch granite dam, 53 feet high and 335 feet across, with a 20 foot wide spillway. Water collect in Big Bear Lake was seasonally released to the thirsty crops down the mountain. After release, you could walk instead of swim from basically Juniper Point all the way to Big Bear Village. So the Big Bear Lake Dam Rock Dam was the first dam, but the second dam was actually completed in 1912, about 100 yards downstream of the original dam. It was about 20 feet higher than the original dam, but tripled the lake's capacity. This dam was not originally designed with a bridge across the top, but one was added in 1924 when the new road from Running Springs into Big Bear was developed. Today, you can see the old dam and bridge as you cross over the new bridge that was completed in 2010. When the lake levels are low, you can even see the top of the original rock dam. That marks about the 18 foot, maybe 18.3 feet down from uh, full. And we started this, uh, I shouldn't say we started, but really close to the start of the winter, uh, about the 7th, 7th of November, the lake was down 17.7 feet. And now, folks, it is up 9 feet as of today. This is very great news. I'm predicting we're going to get, based on my completely off-the-wall predictions, another three and a half to four feet. I can't guarantee that, but I would love to think that's possible. However, there are some major optimists that have already predicted that the lake will come up another two feet from there, and even some more extreme optimists that have said it's going to be full by the middle of June. So who knows? What do you think? Why don't you let me know in the comments? I'd love to hear from you. As you enjoy these beautiful images of Big Bear, here's some more information about the original rock dam. The arch design of the dam, which construction began in 1883, was doubted by some engineers mainly due to its thin walls. They forecasted that the flimsy looking structure could not survive all that pressure of the rising water. However, it has still not yielded and has become known to the engineering fraternity as the eighth wonder of the world, at least back then. Big Bear Lake was created by this amazing feat of engineering with granite excavated in two by two by three foot proportions that were hand drilled by Italian masons. By completion in the spring of 1884, this was now the largest man-made lake in the world at the time, covering 1,800 acres of land and contained 25,000 acre feet of water. From January 1st to April 17th, the lake level has gone from 17 feet down from full to 8 feet 8 inches down from full. That is an 8.3 foot rise, folks, and a total of 9 feet up since November 7th, 2022. This brings the lake capacity up from 29,298 acre feet to almost 50,000 acre feet. Amazing. This is the highest the lake has been since February 2014. How awesome is that? The last time the lake was close to this level, or essentially was just under 10 feet down from full, was between April 20th and June 1st, that's my birthday, 2020. The time before it was around, the time before that it was around 10 feet down from full, was between April 8th and July 22nd of 2019. 
That winter of 2019, 2000, uh, 2020 was one to remember for sure for many reasons. If you've been, if you were here, you know what I mean. We had the most snow I've personally seen recorded in one snow season. That was 165 inches as recorded by Bear Mountain, with a good portion of that snow falling after the COVID lockdowns forced the ski resorts to close for the year. Surprisingly, the lake only came up 2.61 feet from early November 2019 to early May 2020, as reported by the Big Bear Lake MWD. Compare that to 2016-2017, when the lake came up 5 feet in that same time frame, or going back further to the season of 2009-2010, the lake also came up about 5 feet between November to May, but even more impressive was the fall and winter of 2004-2005 when Big Bear was hit with two feet of snow per month starting in October through December. I was here for that. We actually opened up the ski resorts by Halloween, if you can imagine. And that was followed by heavy rain and even more snow between January and March. Any guess how many feet the lake came up? Well, it's still hard for me to believe and others as well, but the reported lake rise from November to May was 14 feet. That's 14 feet, folks. Shocking, huh? Well, maybe shocking, but not exactly unprecedented in the grand scope of how weather patterns keep us guessing from year to year. But there are certain indications of what and how wet a season will be. For example, legendary snow seasons can be preluded by heavier than normal monsoon flow in the summer, which is exactly what occurred in the summer months of 2004, but also in 1968 to 1969 winter, longtime Big Bear resident and former president of Big Bear Mountain Resorts, the late great Dick Kuhn was interviewed back in 2010 by the Big Bear Grizzly newspaper, and he stated how the legendary storm of 1969 was different than other high-yield snow years due to how much snow fell in a short amount of time compared to El Nino years in 1973, 79, 83, and 98, where the snow started flying early and went all year long without any of the crippling storms like Big Bear just experienced back in late February. That was the most snow I've ever seen up here personally. I think uh, by the time all those storms were done between uh, late May and early March, we had somewhere in the realm of nine feet after all that was said and done. Crazy. Hey everybody, thank you for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed the little comparison pictures from the last month or so, as well as the history and information about our wonderful Big Bear Valley and our majestic lake. Right now I'm walking on Woodland Trail and this is a mile long path that winds around into the forest on the North Shore. It's located just across the street from the east ramp where most of the pictures were taken. And it's a beautiful little path my wife and I enjoy from time to time. And right now it's dry, which is one of its uh, best attributes. It's wonderful not to have to walk on ice or snow or mud. It's just beautiful forest with boulders and bushes and trees. Very, very enjoyable. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.